Now we all know humpback whales move up and down the WA coastline. Researchers have been watching and recording them for decades. But now scientists have crunched the data from 13 years worth of aerial and shipboard surveys to work out how spread out those whales are on their travels. Now the fancy term for that is spatial distribution. Now that distribution information is important to know so that those areas with lots of whales can be protected. Michelle Tums is a research scientist with the Australian Institute for Marine Science. While the data has confirmed the importance of Camden Sound Marine Park, it also shows that Pender Bay on the Dampier Peninsula is more important to whales than first thought. There's been uh, a lot of different groups that have been collecting data. Um, So they might be researchers or they might be doing it on behalf of industry to fulfil environmental impact assessments and that sort of thing. Um, And there's not really very much known about the Western Australian population of humpback whales. So we thought before we went out and collected some new data, because it's quite an expensive thing to do, that it would be really useful to to try and compile all this existing data and analyse it. So to tell us, to see if it could tell us what we needed to know. And, And what we really need to know is something about the distribution, so the total area that humpback whales use in the Kimberley and also what are the critical habitats, so what are the most important areas in the Kimberley that humpback whales like to use. And out of this information that you've synthesised, you've made distribution maps which show whales per kilometre. Can you explain about that? What are the, the parts where, where the whales congregate? Um, Some places that we know are really important to them. Um, We've confirmed that that's the case. So places like the Camden Sound, Lalangara Marine Park. Um, So that has been known before as an area to be important for humpback whales calving. um, So where the the females go to have their babies and where they nurse them. Um, So our study did confirm that it is important. Um, But our study also confirmed that Pender Bay is really very important. And again, it, it has been known as an area that was important, but it was it was thought to be more of a staging area where, where animals sort of stage their migration northwards. But we found that um, throughout the whole season, it's a really important place for humpback whales and not just a resting area that they potentially give birth there as well. And we do need to do some more studies to look into that more, but uh, we do find very high density of whales there throughout the whole season, whereas Camden Sound is, is mostly important in uh, the peak of the season around August. So in Pender Bay, if you've found information about the abundance of humpback whales there, would that make a difference in terms of it being given marine park status? Yeah, well, that's what we're suggesting, that it could be considered for marine park status, given that it does have very high density of humpback whales throughout the whole season. Um, but of course, it's you know it's, it's a difficult uh, thing to set aside areas as marine parks and to also have the budget to be able to to protect them and monitor them. Um, but certainly, given their importance for humpback whales, well, that's what we're suggesting. What kind of density is there at Pender Bay? So we had the highest density there out of all the areas that we looked at in the Kimberley, so around five whales per square kilometre. And what we also find, and not just at Pender Bay, but um, across the whole Kimberley, is that um, humpback whales in general like to um, be in areas c- closer to the coast. And we found that humpback whale mothers and calves actually like it even closer to the coast. And so, of course, that there are areas where there's a lot of uh, high human activity as well, where, where people might like to fish and, and tour boats go or where industry uh, might have activities as well, like fishing. So it's really useful for us to be able to calculate things like whales per square kilometre, even though it might sound a little bit funny, because then when we go to assess what, sort of activities humans are doing in those areas, we can really start to um, get a, you know, an accurate number of how many whales might be impacted by those activities. And you've trialled high-res satellite imagery to detect and count whales in Camden Sound Marine Park. Tell us about that and how useful is, is the satellite imagery compared to the surveys that are conducted from planes and boats? 
Yeah, so um, what we found is that um, now that technology has improved so much that the satellite imagery has a very high resolution and you can see things um, with a resolution of 30 centimetres on the ground, which is really quite incredible. So we were able to see whales at the surface and count them uh, in Camden Sound and uh, the, the trial that we did showed that what we counted in those images was similar to what we counted um, from planes and boats. So, so it shows that they're comparable methods and it's really a useful method because you get an instant image whereas when you fly over or go in a boat it takes quite a bit of time to count the whales and then later you, you take that, um, you know, those counts back to the office and you have to spend a bit of time working up the data, whereas with the satellite image it's instant. So it's, it's a really great and efficient way <laughs> of counting whales, but it's a little bit expensive. So, so our analysis has shown that it's, it's really only feasible for, for the smaller areas where the whales aggregate, so like at Pender Bay or like at uh, Camden Sound. And what's happening out there now if you head out, it's getting on to late August, what are the humpback whales up to at the moment and when will they turn around and head back south? So right now it's the peak of the humpback whale season and so our studies find um, that they now, from mid-August, their, um, their numbers will start to drop away. The um, Camden Sound's meant to be the northern terminus of, of where they turn around and start to head back south. They might spend some time resting at Pender Bay and then they'll carry on down. They might even spend some time resting at 80 Mile Beach and other places along the coast. And, uh, yeah, so by early October they would have normally all emptied out of, of the Kimberley region and, and be further down south along the WA coast heading back to Antarctica. There's Michelle Tums. She's a research scientist with the Australian Institute for Marine Science. She, uh, she was speaking with Leah McLennan.